Hey guys, this is Chaos People's Tape, and today you join me for a brand new series. Um, this is what I think I'm calling Rescaled Kerbin Project Moon. The series in which I try to go to the moon and re with Rescaled Kerbin mod installed, and a few other mods to make it more realistic, like FAR and KW Rocketry. KW Rocketry is more to make it easier, because I'm going to need some crazy tanks to get to the moon. But anyway, today I'm starting off simple. I'm trying to put satellites in orbit. Um... What you see here is the launch vehicle I've spent a great deal of time developing because I did do a video on Rescale Kerbin a while ago, um, but that was and I, where I put a satellite in orbit, but that was a three-stage rocket, including boosters. And to get to the moon, I'm going to need probably about a, a two... I need to get it... I need a three-stage rocket with boosters to get to the moon, basically, like the real uh, Saturn V, because that's the only way I can logically do it. So I need a two-stage rocket with boosters to get into orbit. And there, um, there are the little SRBs falling away. I really like them. They're the KW Rocketry Pack. Um, yeah. So I'm using lots of mods like that just to give me more stuff. And I also need the engine that you see right now, which is this double engine. It has about 350 kilonewtons of thrust. So yeah, I need a lot of kind of middle ground type engines. Um, and the engine on top has an ISP of 400, which is very important for um, it, it has an ISP of 400 in vacuum and that's very important for getting into orbit on rescale Kerbin because it's very difficult um, it, well no, with a three stage rocket getting into orbit is quite easy if you know what you're doing but with a two stage rocket it is really difficult I mean it's like starting all over again because when you first get the game you know when you kind of how do I get into orbit, how do I do this and kind of it's it's like that again it's really fun and I've had a lot of well, some fun and some yelling and wanting to just die because, well, I've got far installed and if you dive, if you diverge, no, if you're too far away from your prograde marker, you'll get real problems with, um, with kind of flipping out. So, yeah, um, I've got a kind of... I could have. My original plan for this was to make it a one or two episode, one or two episodes mini series of just kind of going straight to the moon. And then I tried that, um, and I was going to do it stock as well. That was dumb. Uh, I tried that. It was really hard. Um, so I thought, oh god, I'm going to have to spend quite a lot of time learning to do all this stuff. And I thought, why not turn it into a series? Because it will be quite interesting to actually use a real world thing. And then I thought maybe I should do career mode, but. Uh, Career mode with rescale Kerbin would be the hardest thing in the world. Literally, it would just it would it would be harder than anything else in the world. I would solve string theory before I would be able to complete that. Anyway, and I think the biomes are, would be a bit screwed up. Anyway, we're ditching that stage finally. It's that was a very long burn stage. I kind of the balancing for rockets is very different in the real world. I haven't quite figured it out yet, which is my why my rockets are still quite kerbally. But I think you have to have a much bigger lower stage than you do in um, Kerbal Space Program because in Kerbal Space Program it's usually probably pretty a rule of thumb is to have each stage a third the size of the of the last stage. But this is slightly different. This is actually probably more than a third than the last stage. But I don't know. This is just what got to orbit. I spent quite a long time, and if you saw the episode I did with Jacob in it um, a couple of videos ago or something. You'd saw me just failing with this huge rocket, and I was actually, I was, I'm really happy that I got something this small to get a satellite under orbit because it's a very small satellite, and uh, if I'm, this is 1.25 meter parts, and if I had to use 2.5 meter parts to get a satellite to orbit, it would be, it would be kind of, I probably wouldn't get to the moon, and I'll probably be using 3.5 meter parts um, and huge engines like. KW Rocketry comes with some insanely powerful engines, which I will definitely need. I wanted to do it stock, but there was no point. Anyway, there go the fairings. Um, fairings are also very important. Um, with FAR, they reduce drag, and I think probably make you more aerodynamically stable. I've had a lot of stability issues, because I almost had this rocket working yesterday, but there were insane flip-outs. I have been working on this a lot, and that's why Elu base is late. I'm sorry about that, but I really wanted to get this series started. This series, this series started. So uh, yeah, I uploaded a quick Surgeon Simulator video yesterday to kind of have a video on the channel. So you know, go check that out. 
Um, because I, I, I mean, if you want to see other games, that's I am doing them now. Because for a while I just did Carvel Space Program, and whereas I do enjoy that, and I think maybe most of you guys enjoy that, I, I don't want to just do KSP. Because, I don't know, it feels like it's too trapping. Anyway, um, right now I'm travelling at about 4,500 meters a second, which would probably be getting very... Um, Pretty far through the interpla uh, f pretty far through the solar system, right now. But um, I think a bit for uh, equatorial orbit around Kerbin, it you need about seventy three hundred meters a second or so, uh, seventy four hundred probably more like. Um, <clears throat> I think it changes a little bit for polar orbits as you'll see in a minute because I'm still kind of trying to work that out. I am the intention of this was to launch uh, three satellites, didn't go perfectly to plan. Um, you'll see fairly soon. Uh, as you can tell, this is an 18 minute episode, so uh, there must be something going wrong. <clears throat> yeah, so I think I'm gonna. The plan for this series is well, first off, do light satellites, then maybe develop bigger ones, then maybe take men to space, kind of figure that out. I'm not using like life support and stuff because. <laughs> just, just no. Um, and then maybe satellites to the moon, and then things on the moon, and then men on the moon. I'm going to do it Apollo style. Maybe not a quite a Saturn V style launch vehicle, but it will be Apollo style because that's the only way I can logically see to do it. Anyway, and you can see I'm very low on fuel, and that is actually enough fuel because as you speed up you need less fuel to accelerate. Don't ask me about the physics of um, that sort of thing. I'm not actually an expert. I know some things. I know why your engines get more powerful as you get higher in the atmosphere. I know lots of stuff, but I'm not an expert on um, orbital mechanics. Anyway, but I'm aiming for about 7300 and this has a very tight fuel budget. I'm talking having very little fuel left over. Um, and I do screw something up a little bit. I, d I forget that the decoupler force is huge compared to the weight, the mass of the satellite. So I have to boost the apple ups by about 40 kilometers to bounce it out. Um, so yeah, that was fun. That was nerve-wracking. It has been... It is very nerve-wracking flying in Rescale Kerbin when it's actually really important because um, it's the huge chance you'll not get to orbit and I have a newfound respect for space travel. A two-stage rocket is... with A two-stage rocket without boosters is so hard to do. I got very close and I think I can do it but it it's going to be difficult. Anyway, that's me in orbit, and it's not finished. I only have seven liters of fuel left, or whatever unit they are. Yeah, so that's that's scary. Um, it will be very tight fuel budgets, and each stage for things like moon emissions will be tailor-made to their purpose. This won't be so much a Kerbally series where I'm just um, putting things in orbit with tons of fuel and doing what I like. And now I'm boosting the Apple app so I can decouple and get a lot of force. Um, so yeah, this will be a very th more real-world type series um, in building a stage to do this, a stage to do that, a stage to do this. Um, it will be obviously fairly curvy because I'm not an expert, but it will be um, a lot of effort and thinking, and I'm not sure how frequently I'm going to be able to get episodes of this out because it is so much work. Um, but hopefully, I am really looking forward to this, despite my bleak output. And now I'm on the night side, about to decouple. I hope you can see the spacecraft. Um, yeah, I can, so everything's fine. Wow, that turns really slowly. I've left this all at one time to time accelerate because, well, for various reasons, um, but it does take much longer to get to orbit in a uh, real world. Obviously, it's ten times larger. The, if you don't know, um, maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, but rescale Kerbin... Um, is based on the fact that Kerbin is ten times smaller than um, Earth. So it rescales that, and it's actually, I think, a realistic solar system now, so they're rearranging solar system things. So going into planetary would be very difficult, but it was suggested to me in the comments that after I do this, I should put a station in orbit, and I really want to do that. I, like, so want to maybe turn this into a bigger series where I go to the moon, then I put a station in orbit, and then I send stuff to Mars, or a Duna even, but you know, 
and they've rejigged a few things um, in the solar system. Anyway, you can see another problem with going to the moon is there is a huge t inclination. It's 24 degrees. The moon is inclined in 24 degrees. So I launched this so I could kind of get an idea of how much delta V a inclination change would be, and it's 3,000 delta V. So I will have to be launching at the right um, uh, at the at the right inclination to uh, to go straight to the moon, and then it's about a 3,000 delta V burn to get out there. So I um, I'm attempting now to well after a bit of planning and looking into stuff, I will be attempting to uh, um, launch a polar satellite to get a bit of um, a bit of an idea of how that will go down and how had then kind of some basically just some ideas of um, kind of different inclinations and actually just being able to launch into a polar orbit because I know it will be harder so what you see right now is a two times time accelerate um, a rocket launching from the surface of Earth and this has six solid rocket boosters as opposed to four because I knew I'd need a little bit more delta V to get into a polar orbit I didn't know quite how much which you'll see in a little while and I really love it when those ditch I just love that look yeah this looks awesome um, yeah so this is effectively the same rocket otherwise so it well and then after this I want to well I attempt again um, to launch a satellite into a orbit of roughly the same inclination as the moon and things go wrong in many ways I'll have to figure a few things out if I'm gonna do this whole mission. It's a daunting task. I don't know that I will be able to do it, but uh, with plenty of research and stealing ideas from NASA and Scott Manley, um, it may be possible. Uh, I think it could uh, it could go well. And Well, I was thinking um, about building a shuttle, and then I realized, <laughs> yeah, no. I can't get a shuttle to work brilliantly in normal in Kerbin. I got a B9 shuttle to go just to orbit with no payload. Um, I got a stock shuttle which had to have a big engine on the, well that was fast at two times time, sorry, I just saw that and was like whoa. I got a stock shuttle to go to orbit but it had to have an engine on the main fuel tank um, and balancing engines, that wasn't a brilliant shuttle so god jeez, when you actually think about how much work and effort and difficulty it is to go to space in real life it blows your mind and I'm ditching the pharynx now just to save a little bit of mass because we're almost out of the atmosphere yeah this is going to be difficult and I have no idea if I'll be able to build a station I mean I'll, the thing I'm really excited about is actually it's excited in the most nerdy possible way is actually thinking about the mass of my in space vehicles not just like well I better not take a big fuel tank like well I should only take 10 litres of RCS for this bit. Uh, like I was thinking about it when I first started designing um, the, what is it, the um, Odyssey, which is the main capsule, which is will return, and the LEM, which is the bit that goes down to the surface. I think it's called a, a lunar excursion module, I'll have to look into that. Um, and it was, I was thinking, well, I'll just put 80 litres of Delta V on, uh, 80 litres of RCS on here. I was like, wait, no, I won't need that. I'll need about 5 litres of RCS for this docking because I just have to turn around. I've already planned that, like the main vehicle will only need about 5 to 10 litres of RCS because it just has to f use the decoupler force to move out, turn around, dock to the LEM, um, and then and then I'll need a little bit more on the LEM. God, I hope I'm getting that right. The Lunar Excursion Module, I believe that's what it's called. Um, that's just the lander for those of you who know, don't know, which is probably most people. Um, and then I'll have to th then I'll have to fly up from the moon and dock. And God, there's going to be so much kind of <coughs> testing. It's going to be ridiculous. Like I think um, the lander for the moon was actually two stage. It had a landing module, and then it took off without the landing legs and module. To God, daunting. It's too much to think about. God, I've probably bit enough more than I can chew. Um, <laughs> maybe a tiny, tiny bit. But I am, I, I'm excited about that. But now, I have just burned out of fuel and used all the decoupler force and I don't have a periaps. Right now I was wondering what the hell is going on. Why don't I have a periaps? And I just underestimated how much, and I am going 7600 meters a second. I just um, underestimated the amount, the 
how much faster you have to be going to get into a polar orbit. I actually didn't know it would be that much more, but I will have to research that. Um, so I decide, well, I might as well open the solar panels and let it burn in the atmosphere for failing me. Yeah, that's that's what it's getting. Because I have left deadly reentry on out of virtue of I just forgot to turn it off. I will be turning that off for coming back because there aren't heat shields that can protect you from the speeds um, on this, even from a low Earth orbit. It just it would be impossible. But I left this in because it performs an orbital kind of skip where it skips off the atmosphere as you can see it's rising now because it hit the atmosphere and then was fast enough to go out of the atmosphere and now will fall back and burn up in the oxygen god that's gonna be awful that'll be horrible burning up it's like a what is it Soyuz 5 that um, the the service module st was still attached to the top so it came in top first I think well the heat shield was pointed away um, from the heating so the seals and the doors started to heat up and melt anyway that's burned up and now I decide to launch into just an inclined orbit I didn't leave this in because it was a little that would be three launches of the same launch vehicle I thought it'd be a little boring but I want to also put across that it is hard to get into this kind of orbit as well I'm not fully sure what is happening but um I assume I just have to be going much faster. I wasn't actually aware that there was a huge amount of difference in the velocities of um, a polar orbit and a uh, and a uh, equatorial orbit and an inclined orbit. Actually, I will be looking into that. Whether yeah, it's just uh, complicated physics stuff. It, it's physics and words and orbital mechanics and science. That's what it is. Which, but anyway, this does fail. Um, which is probably fair enough because. Um, it's not in a brilliant orbit for testing, but it would have been nice to get a test in, you know, just to kind of figure out some moon things. Because I am going to need some satellite, more satellites to kind of um, use the maneuver planning to um, plan my maneuver to go to the moon, because I'm going to need to know my delta V constraints and uh, what each stage will need, and I'll probably be planning that quite heavily with MechJab. Um, that's another thing I'm kind of... Uh, well, a little uh, worry about there's going to be a lot of theoretical planning. I mean, I will be doing some off-camera flying and planning, I reckon. But I'm going to have to use, like, the MechJab Delta V displays to kind of do quite a lot of theoretical planning. Anyway, as you saw again, we are going... Oh, no, I think we are actually slightly under speed here. This was just um, a miscalculation, I think. Um, so that was a little annoying, but it did fail to get to orbit, so that sucks. I am going to be developing a better uh, satellite launch vehicle, maybe with less boosters and more liquid fuel. It'll just be generally better. Um, I'm going to figure out the proportions a little better, um, but this satellite is doomed to die. So yeah, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you're looking forward to this series as much as I am, and I hope after 18 minutes of kind of complaining about how hard this is going to be, you're still here. Uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like this video, uh, feel free to drop a like. Uh, this has been KSP with, with Tape. I will see you next time.